don't use ham radio for an emergency situation. What did I just say? Yep, you heard me. Ham radio is not the right tool for preppers. Is this guy nuts? Well, I could be nuts. Every time someone asks about emergency communications on the internet, people always reply and say, ham radio. I am a ham radio operator. I've been a ham operator for 13 or 14 years. I got into it for preparedness. But the more I dig into it and the more situations I have in the real world where I try to use it, the less and less and less practical it actually becomes. I've spent a lot of time trying to find the right solutions for my scenario and my situation, and I just keep coming up short. In this video, me and my friend, Professor Elmer, are going to go through multiple common responses or replies that ham radio operators give about how to use their ham radio during an emergency and how you can use ham for preparedness. I'm going to demystify some of these things and tell you why they will or won't work actually out in the real world. All right, let's get into it. I can program local repeaters with Chirp and talk all over the city. So let's break this down. So what's a repeater? Repeater is actually really cool. Repeater of a repeater uh, for ham and also for GMRS is kind of like a cell phone tower. You've got a big antenna up on a tower someplace um, with a control box down at the bottom. And essentially it will take a radio signal in from a handheld or a mobile and then rebroadcast it back out at higher power at a slightly different frequency. It's called an offset. Usually the antennas, the repeaters, are up on big tall towers on top of a hill uh, if they can. And they're really neat. And it is an absolutely true statement that you can hit a repeater with a simple handheld radio and talk over great distances, 20, 30 miles. Here in Austin, using three different repeaters, I can essentially cover the entire city. There is one sort of on the north side, there is in the Pflugerville, Georgetown area, there's one in the middle of Austin called the 940 that covers the bulk of downtown, and then one way out west in Oak Hill that covers kind of the hill country. There are about a dozen repeaters, two dozen in Austin, but those are the three big ones, and they do cover a tremendously, a, a huge, huge, huge area. Absolutely true statement. And any radio will do it. So my Baofeng will hit those repeaters just fine. So that is all true. Here's the problem. Number one, repeaters are typically owned by clubs, which are private entities, and so funding is always limited. So sometimes repeaters have battery backups, and sometimes they don't. So if there's a citywide issue, Maybe your repeater will have power, and maybe it won't have power. Oops. The bigger problem with repeaters that people don't really talk about is that they are only capable of having one conversation at a time. Only one radio can hit a repeater at once. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of ham radio operators in Austin. Can you imagine your entire city trying to evacuate through a one-lane one highway? It's kind of the same thing. So if you have 100 or 200 or 1,000 ham radio operators all trying to hit the same repeater at the same time, there's no way you're going to be able to get in and get through and talk to whoever you're trying to talk to. And lastly, obviously, the person you're trying to talk to on the other end has to be a ham radio operator as well. So, yes, it certainly is possible if you are both hams to hit a repeater and talk across the city, but you and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people are going to try to do the exact same thing at the exact same time. Hey, if you're enjoying this, uh, please give me a thumbs up and drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about this. Thanks. I can hit a linked repeater and talk around the state, if not further. So what is a linked repeater? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. A linked repeater is a repeater that is linked to another repeater or a series of repeaters over the internet. Uh, here in Austin, there's a system called the Salt Grass Repeater Network, where you have a bunch of radio repeaters kind of along the coast from Austin to Houston that are linked via fiber optic, via the internet to each other. 
I can hit a repeater in Austin, my voice gets sent over the internet and pops up on the other end in a repeater in Houston and then has rebroadcast that out. So it's a neat idea, but it compounds the problems from regular repeaters. You have to have power, you have to be able to get into the repeater on top of hundreds of other people, and also you have to have internet access between those two repeaters. So if there's a great big huge region-wide disaster like a hurricane hits the Gulf Coast and internet access gets knocked out, well then that link is going to get severed and, you know, we're toast. I can use an HF radio and a piece of wire and talk all the way around the world. HF radio. Let's talk about HF radio or shortwave. It's really not the same thing, but it's a term people know. So people like to talk on the internet like to talk about how I can use HF radio or NVIS to talk all around the country or all around the world. And that's true. I have done that. Um, I have used my HF radio. For, I've talked from Texas to California, Washington State, Colorado, commonly. Um, my two longest distances is Germany, which is about 5,000 miles, and Paraguay, which is about 5,000 miles. So I absolutely have used a roll-up antenna and an HF radio, and I have talked to other countries. That's a fact. Again, a couple of caveats. Uh, Number one, you have to have a place to set up your antenna. This antenna is 30 feet long. This is my backyard. There's not much to it. I don't have any place to put up this antenna. If you watch my other video over here, you'll show that I use a, paint, a painter's pole to string my antenna up. So number one, you've got to have room to, uh, to set up your behemoth of an antenna. Uh, you should be a general class ham radio operator, although preppers like to talk about how during the apocalypse, who needs a license? Okay, that's fine. The person you're trying to talk to needs to be a, have equipment and needs to be tuned to that frequency. But the greater problem is that HF radio, radio in general, is like black magic. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And it is very, very, very difficult to hit the same person in the same place over and over again, repeatably. We'll say, we'll use my mother as an example. She lives in North Georgia. She's got a backyard. So let's say I wanted to talk to her. She's in a fixed location, but radio waves are affected by the weather, the time of day, the position of the moon, all sorts of crazy things. And it's really, really, really hard to hit the same person over and over again. If you don't believe me, there is a great YouTube channel called The Tech Prepper, and he has a fantastic series called No Random Contacts. I'll put a link over here someplace. And in that video series, he tries to hit specific people in a specific location in a specific time of day who are all the experienced hams. And I strongly encourage you to go check out his channel and see what kind of struggles he's got. Sometimes he succeeds and sometimes he doesn't. It's really hard to do. People also talk about regional communication using NVIS, N-V-I-S, Near Vertical Incident Skywave. And NVIS is kind of like a bank shot in pool where you shoot your radio waves straight up and it comes straight back or down. So my dad lives on, in Texarkana, which is about 400 miles away. So he's too close for HF. So I'd have to use NVIS. NVIS requires even more specific calculations about antenna height and frequency and time of day because to make that bank shot is even harder than just skipping off the atmosphere and talking to another continent. It's possible, but it's not easy. I can hook up my HF radio to my laptop and use WinLink to send emails to anyone on the planet from anywhere in the world. WinLink. Out of all of the ham technologies, I think that WinLink is probably the most practical for preppers. WinLink is kind of like a repeater. You use an HF radio, 
and you connect it via special cables and a device called a TNC to your laptop and it turns your radio into a modem, like an old school dial-up modem. And then with that and with a special program, your laptop, you compose an email, it connects to your radio, your radio on HF will reach out and touch a Winlink, essentially repeater station that picks up that signal and then sends it out on the internet. It was used commonly by transatlantic boaters before satellite internet access was common to send messages while out in the middle of the ocean. It's pretty neat and it does work and the uh, Winlink repeater network is pretty robust. It's all over the country, it's all over the planet actually. You have to look up what frequency is in kind of your part of the planet you're trying to hit and it's pretty nifty. Uh, a great example of this, uh, a usage of this, is during the Nashville bombing when uh, someone blew up an AT&T network hub and took out all internet access to Nashville. So check out Jason, KM4ACK. He actually used his ham radio setup and hit a Winlink station a couple of states over to send emails and texts to his friends and his family letting him know that he was okay. That's pretty cool, and that's an actual real-world practical application. How, and you can communicate with anyone with an email address, not just other ham radio operators. You can send an email to anyone with an email address. That's pretty cool. However, that speed of that, ra of that transmission is really slow. If anyone's over the age of 40, you remember dial-up modems, that connection speed is 9600 baud. So you're essentially going to be limited to about 100 characters. So you're not going to send a robust email over a wind link. It does work. Uh, it is useful and practical, but think about what its limitations are. Think of sending a tweet or a text message. It's going to be 100 characters. So after I poo-pooed on ham radio for the last couple minutes, what do I recommend? Well, the reality is satellite phones and satellite equipment has gotten significantly less expensive. There's the Garmin Spot Messenger. There's all sorts of other Bluetooth adapters that will turn your regular cell phone into a satellite-connected phone. They're like $200 and you know, $10 to $20 a month. That's the same price or less than a good ham radio, particularly an HF radio. This is an SDR radio. It's basically an HF Baofeng and it was $200. I can get a spot messenger for about that that's gonna be a lot more useful than this thing. I don't have to string up a 30 foot wire up in a tree to get it to work. Just use a satellite radio. It's more practical, it's more flexible, and has a much more shallow learning curve than getting into radio. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up, a like, and a subscribe, and hit the notification. And please put a comment down below. I'm sure I'm going to ruffle some feathers, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Thanks. I'll see you on the next one.